Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NHL slate for December 22nd. Pretty good night last night. Um, we got the the late uh, the late rush out of the uh, the bank uh, out of the Vegas Golden Knights to basically double our money for the evening, which was which was nice. Didn't quite take anything down, but obviously profits are profits, and and again we uh, went through our process rather efficiently and. Uh, it led us to the right, uh, well, led us to victory. Let's put it that way. Not complete victory, but I think that we did a pretty decent job. And we're going to continue the same uh, process. Uh, and, and this is kind of the process that I'm, I'm working with now in NHL. And look, I'm not saying mine's perfect, but it's work, works for me given my time constraints and my knowledge of, of the way things work and, and all of this stuff. So what my process is, is first, you know, is, is to go through the games um, with, you know, looking at totals, then running my projection models against what the industry, you know, against the industry aggregate, the industry adjusted aggregate and all that stuff, come up with projections and then take a look and see what type of lineups I would, I could build if I was building by hand Then I have Saber Sim run some pre-builds to see what I'm looking at. And then, uh, later on in the day when I really want to put, you know, my lineups in, you know, when I have a little more time, um, you know, between, after dinner, before dinner or whatever, I'll get those late line changes. I'll do another uh, projection update and then just kind of rerun them. Um, and and you sometimes get a decent amount of difference between what you, uh, what you run early and what you run late. Not as big of a difference as maybe NBA, but more of a difference than maybe, maybe baseball, for example. But uh, this has been uh, it's been pretty a uh, pretty good process, which combines you know doing the right thing and playing well with I guess limited limited time, you know. So uh, if you guys are you know, want to know what I do, this is what I do. If you want to just kind of cut corners, you could or extend. You could do more in depth research and tweak my projections. You could do do more in depth you know boots to the ground stuff about hockey and probably improve upon this. Or, you know, if you want to just get some cool, you know, lineups in for a sweat, you could just literally go in at like 6.30, run my projections, upload them to Sabresim, build some lineups, make a couple of kind of well-intended, well-mentioned tweaks, and just let it roll. And I think in either case, you're in a position to do well. Listen, are you going to be able to make a living just betting NHL, NHL hockey, DFS, based on what I'm, what I'm instructing you? No, probably not. But – it's a good sweat. Uh, it, it's a good learning. It's a good learning experience, and I think it's. I really do like like playing it. And uh, you guys want to know what I do? So this is what I do, and hopefully you guys can join me in this in this journey. Anyway, um, so let's start with the, with the team totals. And again, I'm using the same kind of free sources that uh, will give you all the implied team totals. And again, I, I'm still set on this. I prefer to actually look at the team totals as implied by the people that are projecting fantasy points, fantasy points, as opposed to the implied team totals implied by Vegas betting. And I know that that's kind of anathema to the usual way to analyze these things. You really want to usually give respect to, to the Vegas odds, but when it comes to hotly implied team totals, I just, I think I would just rather, Trust, I mean, trust, but just to get an idea of what's going on, look at the actual, you know, uh, fantasy, fantasy models and see what they project or what they're going with with their implied team totals. And the other thing that I look at is interesting is how some of these models can differ. You know, they're all they all have access to the same data, and yet uh, interpretation is is more listen, it's more of an art in hockey than I really thought it was. Anyway, uh, let's take a look. Um, so let's look at Daily Roto first. It's got. Boston at a 3.8, uh, Washington is a 4, Seattle is a 4. Wow, Seattle at 4? Um, Calgary at a 3.8, and Minnesota is a 3.8. So the top teams would look to be Minnesota, Calgary, Seattle, and Washington, and Boston. Okay. Now, you compare that. Let's look at Saberson here. Um, Saberson has, overall, it looks much lower. Wow, this is this is pretty interesting. Right off the bat, um, it doesn't have anything close to four. It's got Minnesota at three six, Boston at three seven. That's pretty much it. So the things that are kind of combining is that Boston and uh, 
and Seattle both look to be, excuse me, Boston and Minnesota both look to be good in both models. But every, everything here on Sabres, they have projected much lower, which is, I, I think that's interesting. Then we go to daily faceoff, which again, I don't know exactly. Again, I've been following a little bit more this year, but still not convinced. I would say convinced, whatever. I just, I just haven't, haven't amassed enough data to, to, I don't want to say recommend. I'm listening to all information is good information, but nonetheless, uh, they have Toronto as the top team, followed by Boston and, and Minnesota. So that's really interesting. Um, I guess what's interesting is that I don't even have – what am I missing here? I only have Toronto on my board. Oh, because we're on FanDuel. Sorry. I guess uh, is is oh because Toronto is an earlier game. Sorry about that. So it's not on the main slate. Good grief. Um, why would they put this up here anyway? Uh, so it's got the Bruins at the top and then Minnesota. So they're actually a little lower as well than 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 uh, Daily Roto, but still, um, Boston three point six eight. Wild 3.44. So it looks as though Minnesota, Boston, and Seattle would be, from a consensus basis, the teams that rate to score the most goals. Now, again, that doesn't necessarily translate to fantasy points. And it certainly doesn't necessarily translate to fantasy lineups because you have to, you know, you have, you're operating with a salary cap and you have to be able to put these guys in here. Now, again, goals usually translate to fantasy points, um, but that doesn't mean that you could get the guys in that are going to generate those, those those goals and generate those, those fantasy points. Anyway, um, let's pull up my sheet here, and we'll also have the DraftKings lobby. Um, see if we can cash in this thing again. It's top shelf. Um, Pedersen day-to-day, Ajo day-to-day. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. So let's pull this up again. Um, let's see what we're looking at here. So again, we are, we are sorting everything by sheets value score and seeing if we can find a kind of a cluster, you know, and a cluster of teams in, in this top panel here, this top 30, that all are on the same team, and then in a perfect world, all run on the same line, either the same, looking at column K, uh, even strength line, or column L, uh, power play line. And if you can get them both, that's even better. Now, again, this is, again, the, the pure, like, the, the exact opposite of Saberson is the exact opposite of using math and not math exact opposite of using an algorithm and, and a, and an optimizer. This is just taking the work I've done with the projections and literally gazing at the screen and see if, if almost like these letters kind of like, like jump out at you, like, like almost like a Rorschach test. Like what does this like look like when I just first look at this board, do I see a whole bunch of teams up at the top or not really? And the first thing I notice is that there's nothing. You know what I mean? Like, this is the first thing I notice is that, okay, top guy on list is Vancouver. Where's the next Vancouver guy? Nowhere, right? All the way down here. What's the next guy? Look at Washington. Where's the next Washington guy? Okay, so he's Manta's right here. But then where else? Well, then we're down to, to, to Kuchinov, right? So... So far, it looks like this is the best we're going to do is start with Ovechkin and this cheapo. But then you look, and one of them is a 1-1, even strength line, power play line. The other guy's in a 2-2, so that's not working. How about Boston? All right, Boston, we have Pasternak and Bergeron and Martian. All right, there we go. So you have the top rated, well, the top team total, and also you have three of the top 20 all from the same team. All 1-1. One, one. Actually, that's not true. Pasternak is 2-1. But that's probably good enough to rate them as the top play. Right? And let's see what else I'm looking at here. Um, Minnesota. I just see the one guy with Capra's off and everything else. I don't see on my board almost at all. Then you get L.A., who kind of burned us the other day. Um, got two guys here, but not, not a lot. You know? So this is from a just this is going to be, I think, one of those slates where Saber Sim is really going to help you because you try to build this by hand. This is what well, we're going to do it. OK, this is this is what we're going to try to build a lineup by hand and see what happens. First of all, first uh, first rule. 
is that you'd like to play a cheap goalie that projects well. And the good thing is that all these goalies are cheap and they all project well. So let's put in the cheapest one. Let's put in Sorokin just to at least hold something. Ilya Sorokin. Okay. So now let's just put in these dudes and see if we can play them. And Pasternak, and these are so expensive. Bergeron, and then Pasternak and Marchand. And I guess what you're going to want to do is, is finish off this correlation a little bit, right? Um, as I mentioned, they do are they do all come from the same power play. Um, so let's uh, see who else we can scroll down to to get into that Boston power play. Um, and if we can't scroll, we'll just force it. So DeBrusque, he's 1-1. One, one. All right, so let's include him. Okay. But look what you have here. I mean, you're playing four guys. You're going to have to really dig to make this work. Right? I mean, let, let's take a look at, at see if, like, I think in a situation like this, you, you're going to have to finish off the whole power play and then go cheapo, cheapo, cheapo. I mean, who, who else is from the – I mean, you can't go like four, one, 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 one. I mean, that's kind of asking for it. Um, let's take a look at the sheet again. We're just trying to build a hand-built lineup, and it's becoming very difficult. Who? So this is the guy I looked at before. So Mantha from Washington is 310. So that, that's something worth worth mentioning. Is there anybody else from Washington? That's like remotely cheap. Yeah, you know what you can do? You play Mantha and Kuchinov from the second Washington line, and maybe you can make this work. So let's just see. Oh, it's going to be really, it's going to be tough. But let's just see. Let's put in Kuchinov. Oh, and then Mantha. And then double, we're going to have to end up double punting, right, at, at at defense, if at all. Yeah, so you can do this. You can play like a 4-2 with, with Boston, and then you're double punting at defense. Um, just for fun, I wonder if, before I even look, if the fifth guy in the Boston power play or anybody else on this Washington line two is a cheapo defenseman. If so, then I think we got we did something. Let's just take a look. Let's you know what? Let's 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 do it this way. Let's uh, just sort by defense. Actually, we'll first sort by point per dollar. Then we'll sort by position. And let's see if we get any defenses on those teams that are decent. Matt, there it is. Matt Irwin on the oh he's on the number one power play line that's not what I wanted, but Brandon Carlo on the number one power play line is twenty five hundred, so we can play him, and now we can now we can one off somebody uh, in the. Uh, at defense for 3,300. So you can make this work. Whew. Seems, seems a little rough, but, but that's, that's, that's how you, I would build a hand built lineup given what I have now. Again, these projections are going to change or whatever. So this problem lineup is probably useless, but that's the way I, I handle it. That's the way I'm going to handle it. Probably when I get to, to, to lock. Um, all right. So let's now, let's just for, save something. Uh, Again, I'm not putting it in, so nobody yell at me. Um, who's a good Who's a good thirty three hundred or less defender? Um, that we didn't look at yet. Thirty three hundred or less defender. Just sorting by point per dollar. Probably not even going to play, but um, thirty four hundred, thirty two hundred. This guy, there it is. Oliver Elkman, whatever his name is. So you, you could play him. Okay. Or you could leave money on the table or all kinds of stuff. We'll just leave it as a as a as a as a placeholder. So now let's let's really have some fun. Let let's let's 
put this stuff into Saberson and see if I was hallucinating. Like, let's just see if there's like one of these other stacks that just make a lot more sense that with the help of, of a, of a, of a, swear to, what's the word, the phrase I use, not an optimizer, a smart randomizer. Um, it's not even a smart randomizer. It's kind of like a smart random organizer, sort of. Meanwhile, you know, it'd be nice if I didn't put the football projections in the, the hockey slate. I don't believe that my football players would do are going to score that many fantasy points in, in hot. Right, let's see. Um, so let's see. Boom. Brandstrom's out. So let's build, I don't know, 30, 40, 40 lineups. Let's build 40 lineups. We'll use the, we'll use the 20 max settings and see what, uh, what Saberson jams in for us. I'm guessing that it's going to be something other than Boston, but what do I know? Maybe it's going to find a better way to play Washington. Maybe it's going to find a way to play Minnesota somehow. Let's take a look. And the answer is, the answer is yes, Boston, but it found these, it found the Vancouver stuff, which makes some sense. So here, if you run a Saberson build, you're going to get mostly Vancouver and then Boston. But then again, when you when you do run Saberson, you got to look at what stack types you're getting. Wow. They, 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 I, I was complaining that Saberson doesn't give me enough traditional stuff like 4352. And here it looks like it did. So uh, apparently you could play these four threes with with uh, with Boston and um, uh, whatchamacallit. And Vancouver, like if you break this down, it's got a bunch of five man stacks with Vancouver and definitely a bunch with, with Boston with four. So yeah, so Vancouver and Boston seem to be the, the plays, both both from the handbuilt perspective, well handbuilt barely, right? Um, and from a uh, a Saberson perspective. So again, now you just kind of put this down if you if you even looked at this at all. And then you just come back at like six when you dedicate. Maybe what do you what do you dedicate to DFS? Like an hour? You know, that's that's I think that's a reasonable amount if you're a casual player that wants to win. You know, you go up at six, the, the come at six, the projections are updated. You you build some lineups, you know, you look for news, and you put some in and you sweat and you have fun. I mean, you know, don't take it too seriously. You know, don't get don't go freaking bananas. But I feel as though I feel as though I've shown that you know you you can you can get you could be in contention for some for some takedowns playing this way and I've taken some down and uh, some of the guys in the chat have taken some down and if you like hockey it's even better. Um, in any case, that'll do it. Good luck today. Um, we're going to be live probably probably after the slate starts tonight. If you want to know the truth, maybe I'll come in a few minutes early. Uh, we were going to come in at seven because uh, the football slates later. But if I remember, I'll come in a little early and maybe take some questions. Feel free to ask, ask whatever you want. It's hard for me to ask, answer it in the, in the YouTube ch chat, though. I just forget to look. I encourage you to join the Discord and ask questions there and come to all the live streams where we talk about all this stuff. All right, that will do it. Uh, good luck tonight uh, in tonight's slate.